What's up? What's up? All right, all right. All right. Mm. How you doing? All right, how you doing? You right. too, all right. Staff and I have reviewed and revised the proposed FY24 budget. The most significant revision is the inclusion of the cost of the Phase 1 implementation of the new compensation plan. The others are related to errors found and corrections made. Also, I have included a few other notes for clarification of the budget as presented. Overall changes. Based on the additions and changes described below, the county's proposed budget for FY24 now totals seventy-four million seventy-nine dollars. It was seventy-two million one seventeen eighty-nine, which when presented on uh, June fifth. Now the proposed budget is a decrease of sixty-six thousand five hundred sixty-six dollars, or one percent, from the original budget of the current year. The proposed budget includes a fund balance appropriation of seven seven million eight hundred sixty-three thousand two hundred thirty-eight dollars. That number was six million three seventy six seventy three when presented on June fifth. This is this is an increase of two million two hundred ninety three thousand eight hundred and eighty one dollars from the current year's original fund balance appropriation. If we were to spend the entire fund balance appropriated FY twenty four, but I want to inject here for the in particular for those in the audience, um, that has never happened since um, at least since I've been. Um, it will be, uh, if, but if that is the case, it could be spent because you will be budgeting it. It will reduce our unassigned fund balance to approximately, and that number is actually 14.4%. I will direct your attention at your place. Uh, there's a copy, and this is just uh, a review of our um, fund balance appropriation going back to FY20. You can see what the actual numbers were from FY20 to FY22. And we are forecasting um, fund balance, unassigned fund balance for current fiscal year, and of course projecting what it might be for next fiscal year. Details, uh, detailed notes regarding budget changes are as follows: revenues, four hundred thousand dollars in revenue for motor vehicle interest was duplicated. That has been corrected. The advertisement cost received for tax collection was left out. Forty-five thousand dollars has been added. Animal tax was left out. Ten thousand dollars has been added for that. Based on further consideration, Medicaid cost settlement revenue was revised from three hundred thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand. So those are the changes in the revenue side since your meeting on June fifth. Now for expenditure side, first personnel. Since your meeting on June twenty first, um, Mercer has revised their recommendation. After a review, Mr. Bob, formerly with Mercer, who presented at the meeting, stated that their benchmark assessment may not fully reflect the current competitive market dynamics for the Sheriff's Office and EMS for the county. 
He noted that recent pay actions announced among the surrounding municipalities and potential additional actions indicate that the affiliated EMS and Sheriff's Office may continue to see upward pressure on wages, and that's a direct quote from his email. Attached are slides showing their revised recommendation. This change, uh, this changes the cost for phase one implementation of the compensation plan from $1.6 million to $1.7 million. It was already included, but not pointed out, that I have added $10,000 to employee events to support employee morale boosting activities throughout the year, as well as an all employee appreciation event as recommend, recommended by our employee boards committee. I have revisited the vacancy allowance proposed budget, refer to the handout that's, that's included. There was a handout that describes that data. I show the current vacancy for each of the departments listed. I anticipate that the vacancy rate will decline due to the phase one implementation of the compensation plan and therefore I budget the vacancy allowance accordingly. The total vacancy allowance budgeted, which includes salaries and insurance, is $3,145,769. This is $204,231 less than what was previously presented to you. Other expenditure changes and notes. $20,000 was budgeted to rent space for the DMV driver's license office. This has been removed since we now plan to purchase a building for that use. The $232,000 for capital outlay and emergency services was added in error and has since been removed. This is a request to purchase a new tractor and mower, primarily used to maintain the principal and speed dikes. I will reconsider that request later in the fiscal year. Also, the $225,000 in capital outlay for EMS requested to purchase a new ambulance was added in error as well and has since been removed. As I noted in the capital outlay spreadsheet that I shared at your budget work session, I'm holding the potential purchase of a new ambulance until we receive our expected Medicaid cost settlement funds. You, uh, you have asked that we revisit the possible lease of cars for the sheriff's office. We have met with a representative from the company who is preparing a proposal for us to review. In the meantime, $125,000 remains in the budget for the purchase of cars in the sheriff's office. I suggest that you approve the inclusion of that in the budget with the understanding that we will hold those funds until a decision is made on whether to lease those vehicles. We should have that information probably within a week or so. I suggest that once we receive that, and perhaps the budget committee to need to review that. Next is uh, solid waste. It was included but not noted to you previously that the recently created solid waste supervisor position was cut from the FY24 budget. This position had not been, has not been filled. Therefore, we saw this as an opportunity to minimize the amount of transfer needed from the general fund. Um, changes regarding outside agencies. The Summer Recreation Program, which has been funded at $28,800 for a long time, you'll recall this is something that the county has been invested in probably for over 20 years or longer, um, has been changed. This, this is a program we funded for over 20 years and we've been paying for those staff members directly to run that program. However, they are mostly Edgecombe County Public School staff and we found it better that we provide the funding to ECPS and they employ and pay those who run the program to which they have agreed. To accommodate uh, the school paying uh, for retirement, which they weren't our employees, so we did not uh, take out the retirement, we did pay quite for it. We increased the funding to $34,000 from $28,800. As discussed, we are budgeting a transfer of $1,024,400 from sales tax receipts reserved for school capital funding to a school capital fund to hold until we have a plan, until we have planning discussions with school officials. Funding is included for United Community Ministries, the Strategic Twin Counties Education Partnership, or STEP, and the Mercer, Mercer Foundation at $25,000 each. I recommend that you approve this along with the budget and authorize me to execute performance agreements with each of them. I recommend that the board excuses those members from voting where those members have a conflict. 
Also recommend that you take separate action to approve phase one implementation of the proposed compensation plan as presented. I respectfully submit a final proposed budget for the 23-24 fiscal year. And Mr. Chairman, if you all have discussion, if there is a motion, I'll be happy to help direct the process of those members uh, being excused from voting for those agents. Well, Mr. Chairman, before I think you have a question. So, so tell me now. What is included? There's $1.7 million included in this budget. And that is to accommodate the implementation of what we're referring to as phase one of the implementation of our new compensation plan. You'll recall that part of the plan is taking us from essentially having two pay scales, one for sheriff's office and one for everybody else, is having four structures, four pay structures. And they are for sheriff slash detention, those uh, sworn officers and sworn personnel. Then there is health care, those that are purely health care positions, clinical type positions. Then you have EMS, emergency medical services. And then the fourth and largest is what they refer to as county offices. And that's by far the majority of our employees. That's around, I think it's uh, really 256 employees. Mercer's recommendation was for everyone to get a 4% increase. But then based on the proximity, the distance from the market as it was studied, they're recommending differences for each of those four categories. So, and uh, this has been revised since they made a presentation to you last week. So now the total increase recommended for phase one for the sheriff and detention staff is now 5% instead of 4 And that was that note that I read just a moment ago from uh, Mr. Gormley from Mercer. For health care, for those in the clinical positions, it's a total of 8%. For those in emergency, uh, EMS, emergency medical services, is a total of 5%. And then for those remaining staff and county offices, would be a total of 10%. And that um, those increases is what we're estimating to cost. And that includes the cost of uh, FICA insurance, I mean, FICA and um, 401k and those kinds of things to be a $1.7 million. That, that answers the question. You have them here that we approved the compensation plan next, but when we vote for the budget, we're approving the compensation. You're, appro you're approving $1.7 million dollars in the budget is in a reserve for salaries. So do we discuss the compensation plan now or do we discuss the compensation plan later? That's that's what I was well and what I'm just saying we approve the budget and don't approve the compensation plan either I think the funds are well if you approve the budget as one point seven million there'll be one point seven million that we won't support What is the word? What is the word? If you prefer to reverse, I mean, that's, 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 that's totally I just said what I wanted to say.
this for work, controlled increases for work. That be mine, Peter, Derek, and uh, register. Correct. But we just hired the PFA.
they will not commit. So now that we have a <coughs> professional who does we pay a whole lot of money to telling us that if we do this, this will improve. Oh, um, oh. Then why would we not you know, make them what we don't want to hold it? So, um, uh, Mr. Webb, who's not here tonight, uh, Mr. Thorne, who's on the Carolina Gateway Partnership Board, uh, Commissioner Harris, who's on the Boys and Girls Club Board, and Reverend Hines, who is on the Braswell Memorial Library Board. And uh, outside of Mr. Webb, is there anyone else that has any that I've missed? There should be one of the other, other outside agencies. So we need a first a motion to excuse um, those three um, from voting. It will be from, uh, for Mr. Thorne from voting on Carolina's Gateway Partnership budget, Commissioner Harris on the Boys and Girls Club budget, and Reverend Hines from the Braswell Library budget. Have a motion. So first, we need a motion to approve um, funding to Upper Coast Plain Council government in an amount of $21,990. I'm sorry, no, 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 no. Commissioner Webb, not here tonight. So first, we need a vote on uh, funding for Carolina's Gateway Partnership for $290,000. for the Boys and Girls Club, um, recommended funding $10,000. All in favor, no one votes aye. Aye. All opposed. And not really approved. And last will be for funding for Braswell Memorial Library, $255,186. So we need a motion to um, we need a motion to adopt the FY24 budget as presented, noting those members who've been excused from voting for appropriation to those outside agencies. This will include adopting um, let's see five 
budget ordinances, which include the general fund and school capital ordinance, special revenue funds ordinance, custodial funds ordinance, solid waste ordinance, and the water and sewer operations ordinance would be my recommendation. We 
research. So you see that um, that we're receiving uh, from the North Carolina 911 board in the amount of $129,375. And this is to replace radio equipment in the sheriff's office. Uh, this grant does not require a match. I recommend that you accept the grant award and approve the grant agreement as presented. I think that we are at the end of FY23. We will wait until your meeting next week to present a budget amendment to appropriate these revenues and related expenditures. But we were under a timeline to get those approved. Thank you. Then under the contract, you have an amendment to a contract. Our contract with uh, Janice Building Company, they are doing a renovation and health department office in Rock and Mail. Uh, it's a change order that added a few items, removed a few items that we discovered did not need to be done. So it is a net decrease in this contract amount, but a contract amendment nevertheless. I uh, recommend that you approve. Motion.